In this video I'm going to cover part one of our assignment and to do that I want to go over the directions because I feel like sometimes we just jump right into it and we don't read some of the specific things we need to know for each part and you're going to notice that as we go through these each part has some different specifications so please make sure you read through these directions carefully some of it is the same but there are some key differences so you're going to use the given sketch to create the part in fusion and each one of these little grid spaces is 0.25 so we'll need to know that when we start trying to add in some dimensions into our sketches in fusion so like for example maybe the height of this object what's the overall height well one two three four five boxes tall so five times 0.25 puts me at 1.25 so the overall height is 1.25 the other part of the directions that you need to pay attention to is materials this first part is going to be aluminum and after we're done modeling the part we're going to create a drawing which I'm going to show you how to do now within that drawing you need to make sure that you use datum and align dimensioning systems now if you're asking what that is then I'm wondering if you did the previous assignment where you had to go through and answer these questions using the PowerPoint. So if you didn't do that, you have to do that before you jump into this because otherwise you're not going to know what we're talking about. So the other thing that you need to do is um, you need to make sure that you're using an A size ISO template. Why are we using that specific template? We're using that specific template because we want to use the align dimension system which you learned about in those questions. So we're using an A size ISO template and the video link that I'm making right now is going to be right there. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you're going to want to do is open up Fusion and we want to maintain good file management. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my little data panel up here and the first thing that we're gonna do if you're inside like a folder like for example if I'm in Dale's first project you know we don't want to make a new folder in there so make sure you click back to the home make sure you're seeing all projects and let's go ahead and make a new project folder now the name is project folder you could make it up um, since we're specifically talking about e-learning right now and this is our third project I'm gonna name the folder e, uh, maybe week three e-learning um, but you could call it whatever you would like whatever you want to name this folder I'm gonna go uh, week three e-learning and I'm gonna hit enter to name that folder and then I'm gonna pin that so that way anytime that I go into that data panel it will uh, always be at the top let me remove this one I'm gonna unpin that one so if you pin it it'll always be up top and you won't have to go searching for that project that you're looking for alright so I made the folder I'm gonna go ahead and uh, close my data panel and the next thing I'm gonna do is set up some units so the default in fusion is millimeter and all of our drawings that we're doing and models are in inches so what we need to do to change our units you're gonna click on your name up here and go to preferences and then once the preferences opens we can go ahead and uh, change our units So to switch our units, we're going to go down here in the left-hand panel and click on Default Units. And, sorry, we're going to specifically click on Design. Now yours is probably in millimeters right now, so click that drop-down menu and switch it to inches. Then go to Manufacture, change that to inches, and go to Simulation and gener um, Generative Design, and change that to English inches. Now if we were to go back to the metric, you would just change those three back to MM for metric. And then click OK. So now that I got that set up, um, I'm going to go ahead and do a new design. Actually, I can just close that other one. I'm going to do a new design. The reason why I did a new one is because that other one that I was just in was in the metric system still. So we just changed it. So make sure you do a new design after we change those um, measurement system, the measurement system. 
And let's go ahead and do a save. Now, the one thing that you got to watch out for is the location. Right now, it's saving into the last thing that I was working on, which was something called dimensioning practice. And I don't want this file to go in there. I want it to go into the new project folder that we just made. So I'm going to click that drop down arrow and I'm going to go look for uh, my week three e learning. There it is right at the top because we pinned it. So I'm going to click on that and then I should see it there. To name this, you can just call this part one. And we're going to put a dash and we're going to put aluminum. So part one dash aluminum and then hit save. You'll see that it's saved up top there. This is version one. And let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to follow the standard procedures that we've done before and start with the front view. Now you don't always have to start with a front view, but this shape, I'm going to create that L shape in the front, uh, in the front view and then go ahead and extrude it back and then cut this out and cut this out. So um, I'm going to go ahead create a sketch on the front plane and then I'm going to go ahead and use my line tool and I want to create that L shape and you can um, so you got two options you can go ahead and just draw it but make sure you start at 0 0 on that lower left corner you know right here and you could just do a rough sketch of it and then add the dimensions after or you can draw the lines and type in the measurements as you see fit so I would like you to go ahead and pause my video and do that now. Start at that origin. So I went ahead and I created that with all the dimensions and then I hit finish sketch. Um, so make sure you add those dimensions. I'm not showing them to you because I want you to figure that out on your own. I want you to count those boxes and draw that on your own and add your dimensions like we've done, like you've learned before. So the next thing we're going to do is an extrude. So I'm going to click on extrude. And I'm going to drag that out. Uh, this will help you out. What was our depth? So go ahead and type in the depth of the model. What is the overall depth? Take a look at that. You know, your depth is from here to here. So how far are we extruding that? What is it? One, two, three, four, five boxes for our depth. 1.25. Hit enter on the keyboard. Um, and then now we got to do our two cutouts. So the first one, <clears throat> I'm going to do a new sketch on this face. I'm going to use my rectangle tool. I'm going to snap to somewhere on the lower part of the model. Don't snap to the midpoint. You know, snap to something over here. And I'm going to drag out a rectangle and just click somewhere so it snaps on this top edge right here. Don't worry about the dimensions right now. Hit escape to get out of that rectangle tool and let's use the dimension tool. Let's give this thing a size dimension. So I'm going to give it this right here. That depth is, what was that? 0.25. And then now let's give it some location dimensions. So I'm going to click from here to here. So we want to locate that thing where it should be, which is what? From here to here, that's 0 0.5. All right, and if you notice, um, in Fusion, when it's fully constrained, it turns all black. So black indicates that it's fully constrained. And then I'm going to hit Finish Sketch. You can do it here or here. And I'm going to hit the home button and then let's extrude. It's also E on the keyboard if you want to use the keyboard shortcut. So what do I want to extrude? So I want you to select the profile. I'm going to click there. Which direction do I want to go? I want it to go this way. Notice it's a negative number. So we've got to figure out what should that negative number be. Uh, one, two, three squares gives me 0.75. So I'm going to type in negative. 0.75 and it's on cut that's all good so I'm gonna say okay next we got to do this upper cutout this one so we're gonna draw another rectangle give it some size and location dimensions and then extrude cut that 
So I'm going to go sketch on this face. I'm going to use the rectangle tool. Just snap somewhere. Just make sure you're not snapping to the midpoint. Snap somewhere on this top edge. Drag that out. And then I'm going to add some dimensions. Let's see. The height of that was... Let's see. 0.25. The width, or I'm sorry, the depth is, what do we got there? One, two, three squares, so that's 0.75. And then now, so we got size dimensions done, but we need location dimensions. So I'm going to go from this edge to this edge to get a location. I notice it turned all black, so we got to figure that dimension out, and then we should be good. One square, so that gives me 0.25. Okay, and then I'm going to hit finish sketch. I'm going to extrude. I'm going to click that. I want it to go in the other direction. And for distance, I'm going to do all. I could, this would work too, but if I just do all, it'll go all the way through for the distance. Notice it's doing a cut. And I'm going to say okay. So there is the part. I'm going to do a quick save. Remember, this is version one. As soon as I hit save, it should switch up here to uh, version 2. There you go. So remember, you know, Fusion's pretty much doing incremental saves for you. The more you save, the better. Like, maybe after this L and I extruded it, I should have saved. Then after I do this cutout, I should have saved. Then after I did this, I should have saved. Because then I would add three versions, and if I messed up somewhere, you know, I could just go back into that data panel and go into the different versions and maybe go back and work on something maybe that I made a mistake on. All right, so we got the part made. The last thing that we should always do when we're done with a part is set the material. So now I'm going to set the material for the aluminum um, for this part one. So again, if you don't remember, I believe it was under modify. So we're going to go to modify and physical material. So once I click on that, our physical material window will pop open and you're going to see a list of different materials. Um, Aluminum is a metal, so I'm going to expand that folder and we're just going to use the first one. So to do this, I can left click and drag it right onto my model. You'll notice that it kind of changed a little bit in color and that the aluminum has also been added up here for in this design. So now my part is made of aluminum. The other way that you could check to make sure that the part is made of aluminum is by right clicking, I believe, on the body. Oh no, I gotta expand this. If I right click on body one, because this whole body is one part, I can go into the properties. I thought, yeah, properties. And there you go, there's the information on this part. It gives you the area, the density, the mass, the volume, the material, um, the appearance. Notice that all of our units are using the English standard, so inches. And I'm going to go ahead and just do a final save on this. And just say OK. And then now we should be bumping up to version 3. And um, next we're going to go ahead and create the drawing file for this part. And before we do that, I want to jump back to the directions because there was some specific information that was given about the drawing. It says to create the drawing and use the datum in align dimensioning system. So you have to know what those are before you can just go do the dimensioning of this and create the drawing. So if you don't remember, just go back and review your questions that you answered and look at what datum is and look at what aligned is. And it also tells you to create that, you're going to want to use an A size ISO template. So I'm going to show you how to do that because you probably don't know how to do that part of it. So to create a drawing for a part, you're going to drop down this menu up here, your workspace menu, and you're going to hover over drawing and then click on from design. We want to create a drawing from this design. As soon as I do that, you'll notice that this becomes blue and kind of transparent. And then this create drawing window pops up. Now we want to create a new drawing. That's good. We want to create it from scratch. And now here is our templates. Right now, you either have the choice of doing an ASME or an ISO template. 
And if we go take a look, I believe we want to use an ISO template because we want to create that aligned dimension system. So I'm going to go ahead and drop that down and go to ISO. And then for our sheet size, we're going to use the second one, which is an A4. I know this is in millimeters. Don't worry about that. But use that second one, the 297 by 210. That's going to be a landscape A size piece of paper for us. And then say OK. So right away it goes ahead and starts with a base view for us. Notice that base view is highlighted in blue. The drawing view window has popped up. Um, this stuff should look familiar for those of you that have used Inventor before. It's very, very similar. You know, you got your different styles. Um, whether you want shaded, you could switch to different views. You got your scale here um, and different things like that. The other thing you'll notice is that it automatically generates a template for us. Before, if you had me in class, we might have used a, um, a template that I gave you. But for right now, we're just going to go ahead and use the standard one that Fusion gives us. So the first thing we're going to want to do is just add in our views. So I'm just going to left click somewhere in this proximity. Don't worry if yours isn't exactly in the same spot as mine, but click somewhere over here to add that base view. And then we are going to leave it at one to one and we're going to leave visible and hidden edges turned on. So I'm going to say OK. And then now we need to project our top right side and isometrics. So I'm going to go ahead and do projected view up here in the drawing panel. I'm going to click here to select the parent view. And then now if I start moving my mouse, you'll see that it's projecting the view. So I'm going to left click somewhere about almost at the top of the page, right about there. And I'm going to left click uh, somewhere about right here. Now, when we go to do the isometric, because we're doing an ISO, it's kind of flipped. So do me a favor and just move your cursor down here in the lower left corner. And then you'll see that proper isometric that we're looking for. So go ahead and click that. We'll move it in a second. And then now since we're done, you're going to go ahead and right click and say OK. Um, let's go ahead and uh, click on this isometric view. And then once it's selected, click this little gray box and drag, click hold and drag it. Up here, we're going to move that to the top left corner, left click. And then double click on that to pull up the drawing view for that one. We don't want this to have the hidden lines turned on, so I'm going to switch to shaded and I'm going to say close. So we got all of our views that we need and now we can start adding our dimensions but before we do that um, I want to change a few settings so I'm going to go into here into annotation settings and you're going to have to do this every time unfortunately you want to make sure that we um, provide trailing zeros so turn that on for me so you got to do that every time. Annotation settings, turn on trailing zeros. And let's go ahead and actually, before we do the uh, dimensioning, let's fill out our title block. So to fill out your title block, the only thing that we really need to add is a drawing number. And I'm going to show you how to add a picture with our school logo. So you just want to double click on this somewhere on the text. Might take a few tries. And then what it wants you to do is select an attribute that you want to edit. So I'm going to double click on drawing number right here. When I double click on it, the cursor pops up. I'm going to type in one because this is our first drawing. And then I'm going to go ahead and just go up here and click OK to say that I'm done. It already went ahead and pre-filled in the other stuff. It put in my name. It put in the... Um, it put in the... Uh, the date. And actually, you know what? I do want to add a few more things. So double click back on that. Let's go with document status. Let's put in approval needed. So if you were actually in industry, I'm going to turn on my caps locks. Approval needed. If you were in industry and you're finishing this drawing maybe for the first time, you know, and you're, someone needs to approve it and oh, check it, you might put that in for the document status. The other thing, let's go for department. I'm going to double click on that. I'm going to put in STEM because we're the STEM department. And then I'm going to go ahead and click OK, and we should be good on the title block now. The only other thing that I did want to add in was a picture. So I'm going to go up here um, and go to Insert. Now, before you go do that, 
what I would like you to do is go on the internet and just Google and look up Joliet Central um, logo. I want you to find this logo. And then once you find that logo, go ahead and save it onto your computer and save it into maybe your downloads and drop that picture in there. Once you get it saved, then when you click the insert button, go into your downloads and just open the picture up. Now it's asking where you want to place this. So I'm going to pan, left click, hold that mouse wheel and zoom in, roll the mouse wheel forward. And I'm going to left click somewhere where I want that left edge. I know the picture is too big, but we'll fix that in a second. So I want the left edge maybe about right here, but that picture is gigantic. Um, if we adjust the scale, you can play around with this. Uh, how about 0.6? Uh, still too big, uh, maybe 0.4. Ah, there we go. That worked for me. Your number may not be the exact same depending on what graphic you grabbed. Um, but find that Steelman logo and let's bring it in, scale it down and say OK. If you're not happy with the location, hover over the edge of the picture. And I believe if you click on one of these gray boxes, you can kind of just move it a little bit. Will it let me move it? No, it's not letting me move it. OK, so to move it, left click over the edge and go up to the move tool then click somewhere maybe I'm gonna click right in the middle and then now you're moving it from that point so maybe I just want to move it a little bit to the right or so you know you can use that and I can do that again if I need to go back a little bit um, and then once you're happy with the location just click OK just get that picture somewhere in there into the title block so we're all set and ready to go it's time to start doing some dimensioning so what we need to ask ourselves is, if I was going to give this drawing to somebody, what dimensions would they need? We need to follow standard drafting procedures, standard dimensioning procedures, um, but we want to utilize um, those systems that were talked about in the directions. We want to utilize the um, align or datum and align system. Um, a quick reminder, remember datum is also referred to as baseline if you remember that from your notes. So let's go ahead and start adding some dimensions. Um, I'm going to start with the front view and the first dimension I'm going to add is this one. Now notice when you go to dimension you can either click endpoints or you can hover over the line to add the dimension. Either one works for, for this um, occasion. I'm going to go ahead and click the endpoints. And as I move my mouse up, you're going to see it snapping and kind of jumping. That's because it's what it's doing is it's following standard drafting spacing for the dimensions. So that first row of dimensions, I'm going to just move it up until it snaps that first um, part. Now left click, add that dimension. The next dimension I'm going to give is an overall dimension. So to do this, I'm going to go ahead and drop in a measurement from here to here and do the 1.75. Now, as I start adding dimensions, if you notice something is wrong, then we need to go fix it. So if you, for example, put in a wrong number for this first sketch we did, then you would go back to the part file, expand your sketches over here, find that first sketch. Notice how it's kind of highlighted? Double click into it, and maybe change a number if it was wrong. Like let's say this was supposed to be 0.25, right? Then I could change that if I needed to. If I hit finish sketch, it changes it. I can save it, say okay, go back to here, and you'll notice this little yellow icon right here. So I'm gonna click to update and notice that now it is updated with the new changes that I made. So that's how you can make corrections if you see a problem. Um, but I need to go back because that was supposed to be 0.5. So I'm going to just fix that really quick. Put that back to 0.5, what that should have been. Hit finish sketch. Save that. Say OK. And then I can go back into here and sync that back up with the uh, part file and then now it's good. So if you catch mistakes, go back and fix it, make the correct changes so that way you're turning this in correct, um, done correctly. 
All right, so I got uh, that dimension. So that's a size dimension. That's a size dimension. I'm going to go ahead and keep going. And then I'm going to add in a dimension here. Now notice the orientation of that dimension right there. That is exactly what we are looking for when we want to do the align dimensioning. So by choosing the ISO template, it takes any vertical dimensions and aligns it with that vertical edge. So that is an example of an aligned dimension. And um, that's all I'm going to do for the front view. Now I'm noticing that the front view is getting a little bit close to the top view. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the edge of this. And then I'm going to go ahead and drag this view down. So to, to move the view, you left click it once to select it. Click this gray box and you can move the view around if you need some more space in between your views. So I'm going to pull this down pretty close to the title block to give me some room for that top view. And I'm going to go ahead and do the top view. Now when I go to do the top view, I'm going to start with some depth dimensions. Like I want to know what's the location of this cutout. So for example, this dimension. Then I want to know um, the location of this line and this line. So to do that, I can use datum dimensions or also known as baseline dimensions. To do that though, first we need to add in a starter dimension. So I'm going to click from here to here first and drag that out. And then I'm going to escape to get out of that tool. I'm going to drop down the dimension tool and I'm going to go use a baseline, also known as datum. Now when I do this, notice on the screen it says select your base dimension. Make sure you select this edge, not this edge. Whatever edge you start with, that's where the baseline is going to be coming from. So I'm going to click right here. Where do I want that next dimension to go to? I want it to go to here. Then where do I want the next dimension to go to? I want it to go to here. Okay, and then I can hit, a, whoops, I didn't want to hit escape. Whoops, I'm going to go back into that baseline. Click this, click here, click here, right click and say okay. A lot of people forget that right click. I just made that mistake. Notice that all three dimensions are referencing this baseline down here. That's baseline dimensioning or also known as datum dimensioning. Now the other thing I want to add into the top view is the, um, the um, width of that cutout. So what's the dimension from here to here? So I'm going to use a regular dimension tool. I'm going to click on now. Actually, I'm not going to click on that line. I want to click this endpoint and this endpoint and come straight down. Now you're probably wondering, why didn't I just click this dimension, or this line? Well, the reason why I clicked endpoints is because I wanted to add that little space that should be there. If I didn't do that and I clicked just this line, notice it doesn't create the space because it's referencing this endpoint. So watch out for that. So I'm going to dimension from here to here, come straight down. Notice the snapping. Now I'm good. All right. That's all I'm going to put on the top view. Let's move over to the right side view. I'm going to start with the height of this cutout and I'm going to go dimension from here to here and I'm going to pull that out till it snaps right. We'll go there. And I clicked the wrong endpoint. I'm going to delete that. I hit escape to got a dimension tool. Click on it, hit delete. Let's go back to dimension. I want to go from here to here. There we go. Now I got the nice space. See the space there and there? That's what I'm looking for. And then let's do an overall height. So I'm going to click from here to here, pull that out till it snaps. That's good. And then I'm going to do another dimension from here to here, pull that up. And then I'm going to do a dimension from here to here, pull that up. And I don't like where this is at. I'm going to click on that. So if you ever want to move a dimension, you don't like where the number is at, you want to move it out or somewhere else, hit escape to get out of the dimension tool and then just click on it. And then notice the little gray box there on the number. You can click and drag that dimension and move it, you know, where you want. So I'm going to go right there and I'm happy with that. So that's how you can actually move text. You know, if I wanted to move this over here, or over here, you know, you could do that if you need to move something. Also, again, remember you can move views. I don't want to see views running into title blocks like that. So you can click on this view controls both of these. Notice when I click and drag it, 
See that green line in between the front and the top and the gray line in between the front and the right? It's controlling those because it wants to keep those aligned. But just make sure you don't have stuff running off the page or into the title block or dimensions running into one another. So I'm following all standard drafting procedures here in, um, in my drawing. I'm not dimensioning to hidden lines, right? That's a no-no. Don't do that. I'm not crossing dimensions like there. Don't do that. Um, I'm not dimensioning. Um, I'm not connecting dimensions in between views like this. All right. Those are all standard drafting procedures that we've talked about related to dimensioning. The other thing I would like you to do is add in a drawing note down here. So to do that, we're going to use our text tool. I'm going to left click and drag out a text box and we're going to type in um, all caps for this drawing. We used an ISO template to create aligned dimensions. Um, and I'm going to put a period. We used datum dimensions, or I'm sorry, datum dimension system. I'm sorry, we used the, I'm going to move my cursor back here. We used the datum dimension system. Also known as the baseline dimensioning system, period. And we can expand that. So notice you can grab that little diamond shape if you need to try and make it a little bit smaller. You're running off the page. So you can expand or collapse your text box that way. And then if I click off of it, it, it'll add it. If I need to move it, you can left click it and I believe you can click this box and you can move it as you need to. So go ahead and add that in for me. And there we go. And then you're all done with that one. So what you'll need to do then is go ahead and screen clip. Remember Windows Shift S. This drawing that you see here. Into your binder. Right here, insert a screen clip of your Fusion drawing with the dimensions below. You get 10 points apiece. So you're going to paste that one right in there for me. You know, if you need to resize it, resize it, but just make sure I can still read everything so I can grade this. Don't make it super duper tiny where I can't even read it. You know, make sure it's a decent size that we can see it easily. And that's it for number one. Oh, sorry, one more thing. Uh, go ahead and make sure you save that. Whoops, Fusion. Make sure you save. So if I hit save, It'll automatically create that part name. Notice it added drawing. It's going in the right folder. Go ahead and save. And you are all set.